Hey everybody, Leilani here and welcome back to my channel. Um, so I'm sorry if the ring light is bothering you from my glasses or like interrupting you, but welcome to my channel and welcome to my new look. Um, I have my hair colored just like I wanted something new. I wanted something fun. I am experiencing my weight loss journey. I'm feeling great. I want, you know, to fawn myself, <laughs> you know? Just like a new me. Hello. I'm loving the color. I have something in it. Question, who did my hair? I will put that information in the description box below. Her name is Kim. Absolutely amazing. I just never knew that I would ever rock this kind of hair. And I never knew my hair couldn't be this great. And, you know, obviously it's going to fade in time because, you know, but. Hey, look at this. Look how beautiful this is. I got this done yesterday and wow, 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 wow. So anyway, point of you guys even coming to my channel has nothing to do with my hair. I want to talk about the day of my surgery and like the two weeks after surgery, which were the hardest for me. The two weeks after surgery were so hard and I do want to explain that to you guys and express it to you guys because I feel like when I was doing my research on um, surgery and what to expect, nobody really warned me that, <sighs> nobody really warned me that like maybe the first two weeks, three weeks, or even the month after surgery were going to be like the hardest. And I really want to really let it be known that everybody reacts to surgery differently. People react to it like I've read and seen posts that people literally wake up from surgery and they have a pep in their step and they are just rocking and rolling. And then you have those other people who are stuck in their beds and... It's a total nightmare. If you hear something in the back, I usually turn off my mini fridge every time I do this video. But then what happens is I forget to turn it back on and it's no bueno. Okay, so I'm going to leave it on. If you hear it, please ignore it. Okay, it's me and you here. Okay, just remember that it's me and you. Let's talk about surgery day. Surgery day, I was a total wreck. I was super anxious and if you guys watched my very first video when I announced that I got VSG um, I did state I think in there that I was supposed to have surgery in 2017 and my anxiety got to me so badly that I canceled my appointment the day of surgery and um everything happens for a reason and I'm really happy that I did that. I would not go back in time and undo that because uh, going on keto and really uh, sticking to a diet and really losing the weight and working on myself just showed so much for and my character that I'm very proud of. So I would never go back and undo that. But facts are, I get super anxious and I did cancel. So the night before surgery, they know I'm a they know I'm a flake. Um, I woke up in the middle of the night with my whole body, from like head to toe, tingling, just a tingling sensation, from head to toe, and I started thinking to myself, "Oh my gosh, something is wrong with me. I don't think I can go to surgery. Like my body's tingling." I'm Googling things, which I advise you don't Google anything because that's my problem. Even though I'm telling you guys don't Google anything, I still do it. And then it's like telling me you're going to die. And I'm like, ah, I'm going to die. And it's just all bad. So um, I, I think I Googled things and I don't know what it was saying. It was saying some outlandish stuff. 
I almost said the S H I T. I probably do say that. But anyway, it said smell land stuff, right? And I was just like, oh my gosh. I called, um, I was like, I called my grandmother that night. I think I called my mother and I was just, or texted and I was like, I'm, I'm having tingle sensations all over my body. I think something's wrong. Um, I think my mom was the one who like kind of giggled and was like, Leilani, you're, you're, you're just, what is it? You're, you're, you're anxious. Like you are just, you're stressed. You're anxious. Like it's your body reacting to it. You just need to calm down, relax, and you're going to be good. Come to find out that's what it was because I ended up, um, the next day getting, um, oh, I didn't have surgery the day before. This wasn't the day before. It was two days before surgery. So the day after that this happened, I got like my blood work done because I ended up calling the hospital and the hospital was like, oh, well, do you want to cancel? And I was just like, no. I just thought I'd let you know what's going on with me because isn't that important to know that one of your patients has tingling sensations going throughout her, her body? Because it was just like kind of like rude. She was like, oh, well, do you want to cancel? Well, yeah, because I canceled before in the past. I get it. Why you're going to sit there and be like, oh, do you want to cancel? No, I don't want to cancel. Okay. By the way, you're talking to me. You're making me think about it. But um, no, that's not why I'm calling. I'm calling because I'm super concerned. So this doctor called me super sweet, super, super sweet. He said, let's get your labs done. I don't think it's anything related to like surgery where it would affect your surgery. So let's just get all your blood work done and, and see. And like within like hours, it came back as your, your blood work, everything is fine. I think you're just a little stressed out and your body's reacting to it because the day of surgery, um, the tingling cessation wasn't there anymore. It, com it was completely gone. I woke up a complete wreck. Um, my boyfriend picked me up. <sighs> I was crying in the car. He just reminded me, Leilani, you've been, you've been, um, waiting for this for a long time. And today's the day we dropped off my daughter at my mother's house. And yes, off to Kaiser Permanente we went in Ontario and, of course, there was traffic and I was nervous because we were kind of running late and we got there and I wanted to cry again. Um, and I had to calm down. And this is when COVID was just um, like just everything was just opening up again. Like they were finally letting people like theme parks were opening, restaurants were opening, like things were starting to open again. And so going into the hospital, they were like, okay say goodbye to your loved ones like you guys are here by yourselves now and that's when my heart i think fell to my stomach and i tried to keep cool i was like okay okay like until he leaves i'm not gonna know how i feel until he's gone and um you know i gave them my information they said will you be the one picking her up to my boyfriend he said yes you know we did the whole process of me kind of getting into settled in and they were like, okay, give the, you know, give him a hug goodbye. And I hugged him goodbye, went to the back. They told me to unrobe or undress so I could robe. And I started, I, I started crying. I was like, I want to cry now because I just remember how I felt. I was terrified. I was crying. The nurse was so, oh God, she was so kind. She was so kind to me. She's like, are you okay? And obviously I'm not okay. I'm crying. I said, I want my boyfriend. I don't want to be here by myself. I'm scared and I'm crying. And she's like, um, usually we can't have anybody back here, but let's see. Let me see what I can do. I think my boyfriend ended up going to the car. He didn't want to go too far. He went to the car, car. So he was downstairs. They called him. He was up probably 20 minutes later. And I just hugged him and I'm crying. And they're like, yeah, she really needs you right now. And he's like, I figured. <laughs> I'm sure he thought that. I figured she would need me. And he was able to stay the whole time until they had to um, will me into surgery. So the anesthesiologist came and he was my best friend. Because if it weren't for him, I think I would have jumped off that bed and probably booked it. I don't even know how 
I just, it's that anesthesiologist. He helped me because if it weren't for him, I think my nerves would have been just times a thousand. And I don't know what I would do because compared to how I was feeling when I got in there to when they, you know, put the, um, I forgot what he put, you know, in my IV, but to call me, I was just kind of laying there, just very, feeling very, um, like, you know, when you're kind of daydreaming and you're dozing off, well, not dozing off. I say like daydreaming. You're just sitting there and you're, you're, someone's talking to you and you're kind of staring off in the distance and you hear them and you're aware of your surroundings, but you're somewhere else because you're just kind of looking into the distance. That was me. Okay. That was me. I was just laying there and everybody around me was moving and talking, but I was just there and just, they're willing me. And I'm just like, have no care. I'm just like, okay, you guys are willing me. You guys are willing me into this bright room. And they picked me up and they put me from my first bed to the surgery bed that felt super like Oh, like a twin size bed, like a kid size bed, like a kid toddler bed. Like it was long, but it was super thin. And I had to put my hands to my sides like this. And then they, and I was just like, whoa. And I saw my surgeon and I can see the nurses and I can see the lights and I can see the beep, beep, the you know, monitors and everybody was moving around me and I was just like there no stress no nerves no nothing and and that was it I woke up boom I woke up to a nurse next to me um kind of maybe putting in information to a computer and I just and oh my god I just remember my throat hurting Oh my God, my throat was in so much pain because I think they put a tube down my throat, um, you know, to pump the air into my stomach in order to do the surgery. But I don't know if my throat is just like so small or what the problem was because I don't think I've ever heard anybody complain about their throat, but I definitely did. My throat was hurting. Like she was there, the lady, super sweet. And I'm like, <laughs> and she's like, oh, you're okay. You're okay. Your, your throat's going to hurt a little bit because of, you know, the tube they put down your throat. And I just knew I needed water. It's just, it was hurting so bad. And like, literally, it felt like, I could be wrong, but it felt like two seconds later, my boyfriend walks into the, you know, the curtain, like curtain, and he looks beautiful than ever. And I'm so happy to see him. And I'm crying. I think I'm crying. I just, I don't know. I think I had, maybe if I wasn't crying on the outside, I was definitely crying on the inside because I was like, this sucks. I'm feeling like shit. I feel like I got into a car accident. My throat is killing me. I couldn't even really talk to him. I couldn't really swallow. It really hurt. And um, I just kind of remember him and, and the nurse kind of talking a little bit. And I really had nothing to say. I was just laying there. Um, if my, if he asked me, babe, are you okay? I just shook my head. Like I'm okay. Um, I don't think I, to be honest, looking back, I don't think I said anything very much. I didn't think, I don't think I had very much to say. I just kind of laid there and they did get me a, finally got me a room. I think it took a while, but they got me a room. I mean, just basic room. The nurses, I had a Maybe like three different nurses. If anything, I really did have two because it was morning, night, and it was one nurse. And then they, she had to switch off with another nurse and I had her for a long time. And I think I had a new nurse for like two seconds, but that was when I was already getting discharged. They let me take my time. Um, they just wanted to make sure I was getting my liquids, my, my liquids in. That was the most important thing being in recovery is getting my liquids in. No matter what I needed, they gave it to me. Um, they would make me the, just, they would make sure I have water. It, I wish I had a cup. Hold on, I think I do. Give me a second. So I really do think I threw all those cups away because I was so tired of looking at them. But the cups look like this, basically. You know what I mean? And they filled it up to the top of water and, or, or warm broth. And so what they gave me was, was this. 
It is um, just basic chicken. Oh, they gave me chicken too. The chicken was better, but the chicken and beef flavored broth. And you can add it to hot water like that. I did intake more of the broth than I did just regular water. Um, I think they also gave me, they gave me sugar-free jello. Um, I wish I would have taken pictures. If I if I did take pictures, I'll put it right here. But I really just feel like I was just in recovery mode. I didn't take very many pictures. What I couldn't get was my boyfriend couldn't spend the night, which was sucked because of COVID. They did not allow um, guests to sleep over, but he was allowed to be there from like morning to night. And when it hit a certain time and he had to leave, he left. But poor thing, he was there every day. He was there every day taking care of me. And the nurses, if I didn't have him, I had them. And to be honest, I was always in pain. So they just gave me what I needed, my IV, the medicine they need, I needed. And I was just like, oh, and I just felt relaxed. And I actually got to rest and sleep. And that was awesome. I don't want to make it sound like it was a mini vacation, but it was legit a mini vacation for me. Um, just getting up and walking, they were actually telling me that they were really impressed um, with how just well I got up and I walked I, I tried to do it like if I needed to use the restroom I would just like let me take this time to walk if I needed to call a nurse in for more of something I'm gonna take this time so they can help me up and and I can walk because the thing was um because of my incisions and how much I was in pain um even though I had like a bat it was called like a bandage like around my um waist to just like hold me all together, I feel like I needed somebody to grab onto so they can like lift me up so I can start walking. And I, getting down wasn't too hard on my own, but I did need help with that too. I would have loved to stay another night, but I didn't. I stayed for two nights. I would have definitely stayed a third night, but I knew it was time for me to go home. Um, my boyfriend got a hotel for me. Um, for me, him and my daughter, and I think we stayed at that hotel for two nights, and he took care of me at that hotel for two nights, and I do have a picture of, like, my side table, and he just has all my broth for me and my water, making sure I was drinking, and that's when I got to finally start drinking protein shakes, so I started dabbling with the protein shakes, which I really and took super well, thank God. Um, started taking vitamins. I just kind of started doing all the things that I needed to do. That was good. Just being with, I think it was just being with my boyfriend. It was good because I had him and I didn't feel alone and he was taking care of me, but it was when I had to actually go home. Okay. By my lone self without him is when reality set in and I didn't have him to distract me and it was just my me and my daughter and I was starting to get really depressed and this is one thing I want you guys to be very um aware of just be very aware of it that this may happen it may not especially when you're if you have family that you're going home to and there's like a lot of people in your family, like brothers, sisters, siblings, cousins, friends, like that you live with that can talk to you and distract you and be with you and take care of you. Like I, that's great. And I love that. I wish I had that, but I didn't. I came home to a room that I pay. I rent out a room. I, the people who live here, they're not my friends. They're just people who rent out a room and I'm here and I'm trying to just have my daughter help me. And she was kind of around in that time mindset of, I really don't want, why are, um, it sucks that we're in this situation. Like, I don't want to help you. Can you believe it? She didn't want to help me. It was insane. I think she was just feeling her own feelings of, well, my mom's hurting. Why did she do this to herself? Like, I don't want to help. I, it was, it, oh no, that was, it was an interesting moment, but she ended up helping. You know, let's just like, let me get that out there. But it was hard at first where I'm like, Sophia, I need this. And she was just like, ugh, you know, like, I want to help you. I don't know. Her feelings are valid. Mine are too. <laughs> As I said in my previous video, I had a therapist. And thank goodness I got this therapist before surgery because she was a lifesaver. 
If I felt like I had no one to talk to, she was definitely there to open up her schedule to me and let me talk and cry and vent. And I was telling her around this time, I regret getting surgery. I don't know what I did. I can't take it back. I'm miserable. Um, it was so hard on me. I did everything I felt like I could to make my mood positive. I went from always being in my room all the time before surgery to now I'm never in my room. What I would do is get up. This was my routine. I, I have a recliner that I was I slept in for almost a month. Okay. I could not lay down in my bed by myself yet. It either hurt when I laid back because of the pressure put on my stomach or I was scared that I was going to fall to my side and that would hurt. So I did find myself legit living on my recliner. I have a video where I have a room tour. You'll see my recliner. It's just a little, little recliner. I would get up from my recliner um, early, take my vitamins, start drinking water, and I would make my way to the front porch. My front porch isn't that big. I was able to walk it in circles and start my walking. And when I say walk, I mean shuffle. I was just shuffling miserable, trying to breathe, feeling like crap. I wasn't going to say the word shit, but I said crap. That's funny. And I just, I did that every day for three weeks, almost four weeks. And Doing that, talking to my therapist, and when my daughter got up, she would join me outside and kind of walk with me. And the people who live here, they had this little chihuahua. Well, she's not as little anymore, but a little chihuahua, and she would come outside, and she would make me happy. Dopamine, you know what I mean? So I'm just like, hi, and I would, like, touch her, and she would be so happy, and me and my daughter would just laugh and see her. And I really tried hard to just smile, fake it till I made it, and started reading um, or listening to audibles on just like self-care and just how taking things step at a time and not feeling so worried because I started worrying about things that there was no need to worry about. I was worried about the surgery, just something happening to me and it would affect me badly. I was worried about like becoming malnourished, 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 malnourished there's a word like where I wasn't going to get my supplements in and I was going to hurt my body and I was going to hurt myself. And I was worried about these crazy things that, I mean, that do happen to people. And if they don't take care of themselves properly, these things do happen to people. But I'm aware of my myself and I'm aware of the things that I have to do in order to make or have this tool be a, become very successful for me. But I just was so worried. All the worry was just like hitting me like a ton of bricks and my therapist and I had to sit and really speak and talk about my worries. Mm -hmm. Close it all the way. And just what I, the steps that I need to do to, to, to take to be better. I don't want to say, oh, it was just a miracle. It happened overnight where I just started feeling myself again. But it, it kind of happened that way where... Uh, when I was finally able to actually eat food, um, so I was on my liquid diet, then I was on my full liquid diet. And then when I got to soft foods, I think that's when I started to become feeling like a little bit normal. It was still hard for me at that time because soft foods, it's like a lot of pureed foods. Like you had to really chew, chew, chew. And I felt like I was a baby just eating baby food. But... Um, just definitely taking my time in actually eating and being grateful that I was eating, okay? And being grateful that I made it to my through my stages successfully and I'm progressing and I'm doing well and I'm healthy and the numbers are going down on the scale and I'm taking my vitamins, I'm doing well with my water and I just had to start thinking... And taking notes of the positives and what I have successfully done for myself. It made, the, it made all the difference. It's really just taking it day at a time. Taking your time. 
trying not so hard to project too far into the future because the future is so unknown. We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And just kind of living for today. And that really helped me. That really helped me. But yes, the first two, three weeks after surgery, totally hard. And we have to keep note of where we've been and what we've done. And I, I, to be able to say I made it through it makes me feel amazing. Because look at me today. I mean... I don't want to like say, oh, it gets great for everyone because unfortunately for some people, they are going to struggle like, you know, physically and mentally and emotionally. And I'm going to I'm just because I'm feeling great today doesn't mean like in a month or two, I'm going to start feeling like crap again. And I need to really talk to my therapist. And I talk to her every week, by the way, um, actually I moved it to every two weeks now because I'm doing really great. But she said whenever I'm ready, I can move it back to every week. And just making sure your mental health comes first. That's it. That's it. Make sure your mental health comes first. And you know what? It, it was so good for me to be out. Oh, on top of that, you know, aside from walking outside in the morning and walking around, I would legit... Thank God this happened before like the 100 degree weather started coming in. But my daughter would say, can I play? And she would play and I would sit out there all day from morning to when the sun went from when the sun went up to when the sun started going down. I was sitting out there watching kids play. I was on my phone. I would read a book. I just being outside and letting that vitamin D hit you. Oh, gosh. Don't lock yourself up in a room. Don't stay inside. Do something. If it's hard for you to be active because of your surgery, which obviously would make sense, at least sit outside. At least sit outside. I'm starting to find myself staying inside again. and But it's 100 degrees outside. <laughs> but my daughter wants to be outside. And I want to be outside with her. And I think I need... To be out there with her more when she's playing with the kids. But what I have been doing because it is summer break. Um, we go to the pool and go swimming all the time. And I've just been now that I'm able to move around and do things. We're going back to Knox now. We're going to my mom's pool that opened up. We're going to the park. We went to the beach. We, I'm seeing my family again because of things lifting. I'm... I'm with my sisters a lot more. Like, I ask them if they want to hang out. I'm like, hey, do you want to go to, like, a cemetery and just walk around and just do these wild things? Let's just do it. Let's just do it. Let's just enjoy our lives and do it. And I'm so happy that I have my sisters who are down. And I'm so happy that I am where I am today. And I really need to give myself a tap on the back for making it through that hard time that I you never know if you're going to come out of it or not because in your brain you're like I'm never going to come out of this and again we don't know what tomorrow holds and look at me I came out of it and I'm feeling good um as of right now I know that I am uh I don't want to say how much I've lost because I really don't know I don't want to weigh in until the 5th of um July and because I don't want to weigh myself too much. I just want to feel great. And right now I feel great. So if I know I feel great, I'm great. You know what I mean? Um, I hope the best for everybody. I know that I had a couple, I, a few new subscribers. Hello. Hi. 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 Hi, new subscribers. I'm so excited that you guys are here. And um, I know majority of those new subscribers are going to be getting weight loss surgery. So we got this. Go us. I know it's hard. If you guys have any questions, ask me. I don't know everything yet because I'm obviously new into surgery. Again, the questions that I got were about my pre-op diet. You can see in my last video that I have posted up about my pre-op diet and about just other things related to surgery. And But I really wanted to talk about this. I said it in my other video that I was going to be talking about this. 
and here I am talking about it and I'm so happy I'm able to share it with you. It was hard. I felt alone. Like I felt like I needed somebody with me all the time. And that people are probably thinking, well, hey, Leilani, you have your daughter. Isn't she there with you all the time? It's a little different. You wanna be able to vent to somebody. I don't wanna be venting about these kinds of things to my daughter because she doesn't need that in her life, you know? And it was hard. It was really hard. But I wanna thank everybody who has been following me and everybody that has commented on my last video about uh, my weight loss surgery. And I, I've said this before, but I really don't wanna make this channel about weight loss, my weight loss surgery, even though in the beginning I kind of made it about my weight loss because of keto. I just want to vlog more about my life. So you guys will just be seeing me more of me doing more things and just experiencing life and loving life. And I love you all. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to let you all go now. I hope you loved this video and please say hello. Where are you guys from? Let me know. What are you guys doing? Let me know what you guys want to see and... I'll see y'all soon. Stay safe, guys. Stay wild. Bye.